fruit flies damage crops. Poor sanitation held up Benin's shrimp exports and was a disaster for the country's people. Those are serious enough problems, but some are much worse. Bird flu, or more officially, avian influenza, has brought death, suffering, lost earnings, and unemployment. The current outbreak started in 2003. It was a human disaster and an economic catastrophe. The death toll was much higher in Vietnam and Indonesia. Over 300 million birds died or were killed in Southeast Asia by the middle of 2005. The economic cost was over 10 billion US dollars, the World Bank said. <laughs> Vietnam was among the worst affected. Millions of the poorest households relied on poultry. Huang Van Long's family depended on the sale of ducks and eggs to meet their daily needs and cover school and health expenses. For Nguyen Dang Theng, it was chicken. Poultry traders, feed mills and breeding farms suffered too. The government and international partners responded quickly. Over $2 billion has been committed, mainly at this conference in Beijing, to help countries worldwide tackle avian flu. This has helped Vietnam get to grips with the problem. And now we have good capacity. We had uh, already established the animal health or veterinary system uh, from national to provincial district and even the common. This is not a lab technician. She's a factory worker in Thailand, another developing country. Thailand, too, was hit badly by the epidemic. Small-scale producers went out of business. Thousands of workers lost their jobs. The poultry industry virtually closed down overnight. It's a huge impact. It's almost uh, uh, damage and destroy all the industry. In total, uh, I would say that uh, it uh, costs about uh, two billion US dollar that uh, damage our industry by the influenza. Around the world, the number of trade bans soared. We took immediate measures to ensure that there was no risk to European consumers. For example, we banned imports of fresh poultry meat and live poultry, because there is scientific evidence of risk in those cases. But conversely, for cooked poultry meat products, we allowed trade to continue. Who decides what is safe? Governments do, but they've agreed to rely on science or international standards. For example, even in a major epidemic, only some products are infectious, and only they should be banned. For a disease like bird flu, the most important standards come from the World Organization for Animal Health, known as the OIE. Nous avons aussi modifié les normes qui existaient déjà. Si un produit issu de volaille est correctement traité de façon à tuer le virus qui peut être en lui, eh bien, il peut également euh, aller sur le marché mondial. Businesses in Thailand avoided ruin by complying with international standards. They increased production of cooked chicken products. Exports rebounded.
Many other developing countries don't have the same resources to meet safety standards. Governments will never give up their right to protect the health of their own people, their livestock and their crops. But they also want their exports to flow as smoothly as possible. This poses two challenges. One is how to protect health without making it an excuse to be protectionist. The other, for poorer countries, is the hard slog of meeting international standards. Part of the answer is in Geneva. At the World Trade Organization, there's an agreement on sanitary and phytosanitary measures. It strikes a balance between the right, some would say an obligation for governments, to protect health of consumers by ensuring food is safe and protecting animal health and plant health, and avoiding unnecessary restrictions to international trade. So that essentially the goods can now trade. And this is where they discuss these issues the SPS committee at the WTO. Mexico. Developing countries, too, are using the committee more and more. Of course, uh, when we participate in the SPS committee, uh, we find um, opportunities to, um, to co get, con get in contact with our uh, trading partners to discuss our problems. Chile tiene una muy buena condición sanitaria, pero debe demostrarla. Y una forma de demostrarla es a través de los principios del acuerdo. In cases where we are not able to comply, definitely we will export less and less and economic growth will go down. Bird flu has become a frequent topic. Even though the less dangerous or low pathogenic strains don't carry the same risk, some countries still block trade. This can mean economic loss, but no additional health protection. As more scientific information becomes available, it's necessary to review the measures taken by governments and to work on the basis of international standards. For bird flu, that means the standards set by the World Organization for Animal Health. For food safety, it's the Codex Alimentarius Commission. For plant health, the International Plant Protection Convention. Trade problems due to avian influenza are not likely to go away. But the WTO's agreement, international animal health standards and cooperation can help countries tackle them.